and welcome back to this channel. So today's topic is going to be about smart objects in Photoshop. Okay, so what are smart objects? Do you remember the mock-up tutorial that we did a couple of weeks ago? Something which looked like this. That had some elements which said insert your design here or something like that and you could just double click on that and it would take you to a different place where you could add your designs. So that is what we are talking about in this tutorial. But we're not going to be concentrating on mock-ups as such. So this is not about that. This is all about how to place a link to Photoshop file into your Photoshop file and also how to use Illustrator files as smart objects in your Photoshop. So let's just get started. But before we start, I just want to tell you that the things that you're seeing on screen right now, for example, this journal page, this recipe card, and this again diary page uh, which also comes in A6 and A5 sizes. These are all being given as a newsletter freebie in my March newsletter. So if you haven't picked it up yet, you can go ahead and check the link in the description box below. You just have to sign up for my newsletter and you can access all the previous freebies. Okay, so let's just start with this. So first we're going to learn how to link a Photoshop file into a Photoshop file. So you can go to file and say place linked. But before that, let's just talk about this place embedded. What place embedded does is when you take an image and click on place embedded, that image gets on this Photoshop file. And even if you delete the original file from your folder, it still remains in your Photoshop file. When you say place linked, any changes that you make to the original file gets reflected in the Photoshop file as well. And that's exactly what we need. So we're going to click on place linked. So I'm going to bring in this hello.pst and click on place. And now I can place it anywhere I want. Maybe this is a journal. So let's just say begin with hello and press enter to make sure that it's been placed. All right. So this is how we place it. And then you can see this layer here. If you cannot see layers, you can go to window and then layers. So now if you want to edit this particular hello, like maybe change the color or something, you can just double click. And then it opens the Photoshop file. And now I'm going to adjust the hue and saturation if I want to. If you cannot see it, you can find it under window and then adjustments. I'm going to click on hue and saturation. Uh, just know that this is black, so we can't actually change much of colors, but we could actually change it to a little more gray. And let's just do that because we just want to see how it looks like, right? So I'm just going to minimize that and press command or control S to save this. And now let's go to our journal page and you can see that it has become gray as well. So it immediately updates it and we don't have to make changes here. But that's not the only thing that you can do. So you can go to a different file and you can also do a place link. Let's put the same file and let's reduce the size a little bit. It's too big and let's place it here and press enter to place it. Okay. So we have this ready and now I'm going to go ahead and we can go back to our, I'll just close this. I can go back to my journal page here and go to the link file, double click. And in here, let me do one thing. Um, I'll make it black again. So let's just uncheck this and then it's black again. Come on, a control S to save and you can go back to your journal page and it's black. Now go back to your dear diary and it's black as well. So it kind of updates everywhere like if you have around hundreds of files which use this particular for example your logo and you want to change it across all these documents this is like the best way to do it uh, so it's always better to link your psd file into it instead of actually placing the image over there because it gives you much more flexibility than it would with an image all right so now that these files were open so it was pretty simple you notice oh it updated so i'm just going to close this file, but I'm going to save it first. So file save as, and let me mark it as test or something. Save. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to close it. Now I'll go back to my journal page. I'll double click on this. And here I'm going to change the hue. Oops. Ah, back to gray. Command or control is to save. Let's go back to journal page. It's gray, but now let's look at the dear diary. PSD. Okay, let's open this. It's still black. It hasn't been updated, but you can see a little warning right here saying that, hmm, this might not have been updated. So you can just go to layer, smart objects, 
update all modified content and it automatically updates everything. So yeah, basically it's still better than putting an image out there and then wondering, damn, I need to change it for all these hundred files. So yeah, this is one good thing about having linked PSD files inside your PSD files. Okay, now let's talk about one thing that I use the most, I guess, because I work with Illustrator a lot compared to Photoshop, I tend to make most of my elements in Illustrator. For example, these are flowers and leaves, they were all done in Procreate, so they are Photoshop compatible and not exactly Illustrator compatible. So I had to use Photoshop for this, but I needed to make these dotted lines, which is very simple to make in Illustrator. And that's why I got these dotted lines from Illustrator and I added it as a smart object. So if you scroll down, okay, let me group things together so that it's pretty easy. You can press Command G to group them all together. Just hold your Shift key and select all the files and then press Command G to group them. Okay, so this is the vector smart object. It has a little bit of a yellow sign. I don't know why, uh, but we'll double click on it. And then it opens up an illustrator because this is an illustrator file, which I dropped in to my Photoshop. So there was a warning sign here. That's because I had modified the illustrator file to have a black dotted lines, but I did not update the smart object. So I can just go to layer, smart objects, update on modified content, and there you go, voila. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select everything by pressing Command A, and we'll give this a different color, maybe red. You can also change in your dash lines, straight lines, or whatever you want and press Command or Control S to save it. And now when you come back, it automatically changes. And that's the beauty of having Illustrator smart objects in here. So I'm just gonna tell you how I add these smart objects. So I'm just going to uncheck this here so that this is all blank and nice. And um, the major thing is you just have to create a file, uh, whatever size you want, it's totally dependent. This here, I have the exact same size as the journal page here so that I have an idea of where the lines should be placed. Pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these bunch of lines here and make it dashed and make it blue just because I can. It doesn't matter. I'll press Command or Control A to select everything. I'll press Command or Control C to copy. I'll go back to my Photoshop file and I'll press Command or Control V to paste. And in here you get this little tiny box which tells you about different options. So one thing you should know, if you use these things, you might not have as much flexibility as you would have if you choose a smart object. And about add it to my current library, this is totally up to you. You can do it or uncheck it, it's up to you. I'll click OK. And now you have your lines ready. You can actually expand them because it is illustrate a vector smart object. It's not going to mess up your clarity with the lines. So that's the, I think, a really good thing about that. And now you can just click Enter to make sure it's set, click outside and you can see your lines. And now if you want them to go behind, just bring them behind the group and then you'll have them all behind your elements. So yeah, if you wanna go ahead and change it again, all you have to do is go to this vector small objects, double click and it'll open up this one again and you can choose whatever you want. And it opens up a new window because it considers this as done and dusted. So you gotta save things and then it'll be perfectly fine. So you could just do this and yeah, select any color you want, command S or control S to save. You go back here and it gets updated. So that's the beauty of smart objects, especially Illustrator smart objects. Okay, I guess that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I know it was very tiny and uh, this is definitely not everything about smart object. There's so many things that you can do with these things and this was just a tip of an iceberg. I hope I encourage you to go and Google more about smart objects and the awesome things that you can do with it. And um, I guess that's it. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also turn on the bell notification so that you get notified every time I post a video. I usually post videos on Tuesday and on Thursdays I post a painting video if you're interested in that. You can paint along with me as well. If you have any questions, you can DM me directly in Instagram. Uh, you can find the Instagram link as well in the description box below. And uh, I hope you have a good week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.